Say to the person next to you, I love you. I love you. Say to the person next to you, I love you. Give them a hug and tell them I love you. I love you. I love you. Some group love. In fact, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something as well. I'm going to try something. See the person that you just told I love you. After three, I want you to make more noise than them. After three, I want you to make more noise than them. One, two, three. of Knife Crime Victim Support and I'm a professional youth mentor. I've come all the way down here from Sheffield today. I don't live in Sheffield but I was working in Sheffield cool. and I've got one of the best jobs ever and that's to teach young people how to express themselves through creative writing and creative arts. But this one's cool. I don't know what this is. I think I'm going to try this for the first time ever. I've never done this before like this. And it's called Quick Trip to, to Cairo on that key. Quick Trip to Cairo. Wicked. But the track's called Quick Trip to the Guilt Trip. Jeez. And what it's about, before you start, is um, you'll see that it literally is a quick trip to a guilt trip. And it, I grew up in a house, my mum was like a 90s raver, she used to go out all the time and rave and... Come yeah. on. And it was a bit of a dysfunctional kind of place, but I loved it and I enjoyed it and I ended up being a little bit of a raver as well. Um, but it's a long story, but a little bit in this, kind of. Jeez! Okay. Yeah. Quick trip to a guilt trip. How many times have I used this bottle opener to peel back the lid that inhibits the deepest of my desires? Clutched in one hand on a Monday when I said I'm not touching the brandy. E and J from the co-op, but you know what? At least I can negotiate the price. 1999 might be slightly fine, but I reassure myself on a school night that I don't do this every time. It's crazy, it is. It's 15 pounds enough to pay the babysitters, especially when I might be coming back in the twilight hours, thinking God knows who this is, and of course my phone is missing. Anyway. Between wandering around Camden and getting off at King's Cross, I lost my best friend, but she must have pissed me off. I think I'm fucked off. That kebab tasted off, and I feel like dozing off with a nice cup of coffee. But I'm not gonna stop, see? Nah, not me. I know tonight's been costly, but I'm not about to log into my online banking. I'm kind of recollecting that it's been rinsed out. No doubt my credit card's been maxed out, but I'm out and about shouting out that one day I'll be a millionaire like Rod. I wonder if she got the night bus. I wonder if she comes back with a bunch of friends telling us that they'll buy Copperberg syrup and wine for us. It's amazing what a line does. A kitchen full of strangers acting like best friends and chewing their jaws off. Talking about how Ford on the horns had the crowd jumping like jumping Jack Frost. And DT told me three times he was loving it, loving it, loving it. Come and see a reunion with a live percussionist, some drums and a sick saxophonist, and MC Creases. We need to get to do it again, again. <laughs> From what seems to be the back of his esophagus, we're all storytellers. Every single one of us are city dwellers. Wanna be Rockefellers in a playground of swings and roundabouts. Too late now to think about who she brings around the house. I realised that when the sun was coming out and the kids were coming down. I'll have to try to pretend to be sober for an hour. Leaned over for some power just before the door opened and I saw my eldest son. Went from a quick trip to a guilt trip. Asked him to make the littlest some breakfast and if he did, I'll give him a tenner to make up for it. Trying to avoid eye contact at the same time as making sure my eyes weren't rolled back but I know that he sighed and then side-eyed me for a fact. It kind of put a downer on the after party, but I'm smashed. Fair play though, he got them ready and I sent them all to school in a taxi. I'm just glad the youngest two never saw me. Should have maybe paid the babysitter a bit more money to stay with me. But I think she was pissed because I made her late for uni. But anyway, now I've sorted the kids out, in inverted commas. I swagger back into the kitchen feeling like the joker in the circus. 
Like I'm about to hit a dopamine for certain Until some loon started opening the curtains I feel bad now and my throat is really hurting But I'm hoping for diversion From any sense of reality Feels like I've spent half my freaking salary One of them said they like Amy So I asked them to play Valerie And I can't work out if my conscience is crazy or if it's mad at me But half the room's on Monday Dancing and balancing Silhouettes with big eyes Celebrating the sunrise I think my bestie went upstairs with some guy Sometimes I think she's the geezer Cause that's not what I meant when I said come back to mine for an easer But anyway, I joke to myself He's had so much coke to himself that I doubt he'll get a hard on As I contemplate opening the double doors that lead out into the garden Cause it's too contraphobic in here Everybody's talking a lot But I like the way all of us contributed to the alcohol that we bought in the shop Put a Super D mix on I said to one of the lads who offered me a key and his mate said Who'd you get this from? Just as that house tune came on a little bit of an experiment because I've not done that sort of music before and what it is, it's just a representation of lots of things that happened when I was younger. So in fact, the kid that came downstairs might have been me, but I'm not saying on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so like, because I came from that background, that's what's kind of made me grow up and kind of get introvert and like, introspective, not introvert, and, and just be able to reflect and unravel and process my environment. And so that's how I've been trying to encourage young people and uh, children, young people and adults as well. Um, I'll share my, my details with you later on. Let's have a bit of affirmation. After me, I am in control of my destiny. Let me hear you. I'm in control of my destiny. I am in control of my destiny. I am optimistic. I am optimistic. I believe. I believe. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am successful. I am successful. I have faith. I have faith. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for forgiveness. I am elevated. I am elevated. I am energy. I am energy. I am what I think I can be. I am what I think I can be. I am confident. I am confident. I am a born leader. I am positive. I am me. I am me. Let's get it. Cheers! Woo! Cheers! Okay, so that second one, yeah? I wrote this for um, Essex Police, actually, who wanted to address um, hate crime um, in the community, especially in their county. And so I, I, the way that I approached it, I didn't know how to write about all the protected characteristics that I had to involve. Um, so I just called it My Name is Humanity because that helps me. That is like a, just a way to cheat and address everything, yeah, without being myself talking about everything. So hopefully this will change from the radio. Uh, My Name is Humanity. And you can listen to me impartially, but I have a way it seems to me that now is the time I need to speak. Parts of me are falling apart at the seams and I'm seeing things that make me feel like I need to be woken up from a bad dream. Why? Because it's hard for the mind to know that some of us are being unkind instead of humankind. Whilst others turn a blind eye to the plight of those being marginalised. It's like I've opened up a window that I can't minimise and most definitely can't justify. You see, I... I just can't understand how we've multiplied at the same time as being divided. How we have the technology to guide missiles, but we're still being misguided. What happened to the spirit of togetherness? When did we forget the concept of acceptance? By the time I finish their sentence, there's a story of one of us being born out of love. But at the same time, someone, somewhere, has had more than enough. Frequently harassed, repeatedly attacked for the colour of his skin or for the beliefs that he has. Because he's living with a man or she's wearing a hijab. Ask the person driving them away, the one swearing at the cab. Why he feels this way. He'll say he learned it from his dad or I saw it growing up and it's just the way I am. I think sometimes we develop content for what we don't understand. But if we envelop resent then things won't go to plan. 
From the woman in the wheelchair who was verbally abused To the boy who got picked on when they heard he was confused You don't have to be the same as every person in the room I know it's hard to be yourself when they're persecuting you But they connect with your soul If they were walking in your shoes Could we have a common goal instead of separating groups? Can we remember World War II why we had to send the troops? Can we stop demonising Muslims and dehumanising Jews? Can we try not to troll when we post from our devices? Like the ones who associate every Asian with ISIS Then walk into a restaurant and try all of their spices I don't want my kids to grow up in a world where everybody's fighting Where people are isolated because an attitude defines them Where your race or your religion can leave you outside at night frightened Where a Chinese man is beaten because he invented COVID-19 I, I am humanity You don't have to victimise me, you are me I know sometimes not everyone agrees and everyone's entitled to opinions and beliefs but there's no need for extremism. Every single one of you are the reason I exist. Be the real you. Don't embrace the narrative. You need to know we'll all disappear if I breathe my last breath. Because if everybody's far right, we'll have nobody left. To know we'll all disappear if I breathe my last breath. Because if everybody's far right, we'll have nobody left. When you hear this, I want it to be the beginning of your healing process. If life has dragged you to the darkest of places and you're feeling hopeless, if it seems like negative energy is constantly poisoning your progress. If there's a pain in your chest. If reality slowly but relentlessly draws a map on your face. If it feels like the world is whizzing by and you can't keep up with the pace just lately. I think I know where you are. I think you're lost sometimes like we all are and you're walking with a heavy heart. I think you were born with courage from the very start but the past has been harsh. I think this isn't the first time you've fallen apart and put yourself together again, only to be broken in half. Asking yourself in the morning, how long can this last? With your head in your palms. But look up, tell yourself that you deserve another chance. Remember it was you who dusted yourself off all of the other times, when everything you built felt like it was burning down, but you called it a forest fire. Because you built it all back from scratch at a time when your life was more than volatile, with only yourself to rely on. When it seemed like all of your friends were standing on the shoulders of giants whilst you're stood in the cold and it's quiet trying to survive until the stars are aligned but you're ready to shine at this moment in time Why wait for the stars if you can see the sunrise? It's beautiful when you can see the glass is half full and you show people in the past you can't fall with your head held high, back arched and stood tall Don't let your dreams die, that's half the battle Find your safe space and tell them all I'll be back soon Then close your eyes and have faith in the law of attraction The universe will respond with more than you imagined With miracles and breakthroughs you were born to be a champion A wise man told me this and I share it with everyone mm. You don't have to see anyone who don't see that you could be anyone Ooh. Say that again! Pull it, pull it! A wise man told me this and I share it with everyone you don't have to see anyone who don't see that you could be anyone. anyone. So delete negativity and you will prevail. Leave behind those who took the wind from your sail. Find your purpose and surround your tomorrows with the ones who never left you to drown in your sorrows. Mm. Be in sync with your instincts and all will be fine. It's about time you realise that you can realign. Mm. Nobody ever said you won't fall on hard times. But heroes are born when they are forged from cast iron. Yes. Mm. When we look at the sun, we know it's more than justifiable. So telling yourself you're more is more than justifiable. Oh, yeah. There's no need to look back, I know it hurts when you do. What a day to celebrate. It's the rebirth of you. Yeah. Should we get Christmassy real quick? Should we get Christmassy?
Let's get Christmassy real quick. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas. <laughs> I can see the beauty of the stars filtering through evergreen trees. Snowflakes blanket the landscape and the air turns to frost when I breathe. Lost on a hilltop just watching the snow drop on rooftops and people at bus stops. They're stamping their feet and blowing hands through gloves. Maybe they're in a rush to go home to their loved ones. Maybe there's no one. But at least most of us can go home, kick our shoes off, make a hot drink, snuggle up and put a film on. Or just gaze at the fireplace. The flames flickering and dancing, casting shadows across the room and capturing your imagination. You close your eyes and picture balancing on ladders to hang in the decorations. The room is filled with light, love, laughter in your closest relations. With hope on their faces. It's been a difficult year and they've been coping in phases and we go with the changes. But we never knew this would stop us from going to places. But I hope you all found hope behind the doors of your advent calendars. And you're sharing stories of how you overcame disappointment and challenges. Not everyone's managing. But now is the time to check in with them. On the day when a king was born in Bethlehem. Yes, we may have missed the nativity play. But we will endure, it's just humanity's way. And children will sing rhymes in the back of the estate when we're allowed to drive down to Nana's to stay. Mm. <laughs> but for some it's too late. So many won't be with us to make the most of the festivities. Deepest condolences and heartfelt sympathies. Find comfort in knowing they live on in your memories. I know it's hard when they were taken by an invisible enemy. But they'll be looking down on the family when they're opening presents. And you'll feel their spirit in the room even though they're not present. Remember building that snowman with the hat and the staff. Remember drinking Baileys and having a laugh. Remember the turkey that granddad would carve. And remember when your uncle was like an agony aunt. Mm. <laughs> this tops well hot. <laughs> Remember the times when your friends would be here and we'd all celebrate at the end of the year. But now it feels weird. We're all in separate tiers. Remember last year when we were in separate tiers? Yeah. Yeah. And we took things for granted like sharing a beer. But Christmas is nearly here. And I want you to know we're all in this together. Be confident our country will always endeavour. Pour a cup of compassion, sprinkle love without measure. And be reassured that this won't last forever. So tell the little ones that Santa's still coming. And look on with a smile when they come down the stairs running. Because most are oblivious to what we've really been through. Give them a hug and a kiss and say, I'll do this for you. everyone i know this by the way everyone has performed we've absolutely smashed it and i want to shout out to uh, my co-host or co-headliner curly word make some noise for curly word <laughs> and everybody else and i know that there's still a couple of people coming over but um nice sentence i have to do nice sentence that's the reason why, a lot of the reason why i do poetry and the stickers fell out and it's really irritating me right now <laughs> Just start from the beginning and work your way to the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Do you not plug the knife sentence thing as well? Yeah, don't forget, you can get. I don't want to do plug it, but he, have a look at his hoodie and right. see what it says. I feel right. awkward right now, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm not my, model, no. I'm he's got those online as well. Isn't it? And every, all the proceeds do go back into Plus. our charity work that we do in the community. And if you like, want to see me at the end, I've got this little scan thing that you can scan, and it shows you all my. It's quite clever, actually. It's on the phone, it shows you all my socials. Can we have that last instrumental, please? I'm going to try and do it tonight. How have you ever stopped to ask that boy that carries a knife what he wants to do when he's older? If his parents are still together and who his role models are? Because I guarantee you, he don't live next door to a doctor. Instead, he's more than likely to be riding with Fox. Mm. And they're the ones in the community prescribing the drugs and driving those cars. And I wonder if, as a teenager, he's watching how the olders carry themselves and his learned behavior. I wonder if by the age of 12, he never had a father and why? At the age of 13, he had his first balaclava. Was he ever scared? Is it that mum don't care? Is it just that she was never there? Maybe she's out trying to provide for the family And by the time she gets back she feels tired and angry Are the arguments at home is there a lack of affection? Are the boys outside offering you protection? From the youths up the road in a different postcode The reason why you always go the long way home 
to the orders on the block become your bigger brothers. Now it's almost as if you're related to each other. Gang related. Now we've got a council estate kid filled with hatred who needs to be initiated before he's fully affiliated. Is that environment just making him numb? He have a choice of is it safety in numbers. Because they're not meant to be your mentors. That's what we need grown men for. To lead by example and to nurture ambition. To teach discipline, to understand and to listen. And I apologize for generalizing. For coming across like I'm stereotyping. But we all need to know we are marginalizing a whole generation where we criminalize them. Who really wants to end up in prison or dying? And the social networks make it all look exciting. The way that gangs inside violence live online and it's followed by an advert to make sure we're still buying. And I'm not about to blame this all on drill. But thoughts become words and words become real. So tell me there's not a vested interest in what's manifesting when all the kids can hear is I splashed him and I chefed him, dipped him outside of his house and then left him for his mum to find him. Have you been to a funeral and heard the mother crying? When her song's in the ground, it sounds like she's dying. And it's been like this for years. Wiping those tears and printing those teas, saying, put the knife down, blaming police, right into our local MPs. I see mums at knife crying while it's begging on their knees, like, they took my song, but make it stop, please. And it's our responsibility. Have you heard it takes a village to raise a child? But we're losing our communities and they're left to run wild. And this isn't the time for answers and excuses But the youngers need to know there's consequences for their offences Justice will be served if you're caught or let go Because when you take a life, you forfeit your own